Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to Dragged Out. It's the podcast where, you know, I have one-on-one interviews with some of those queens who may have went home a little bit too early on a Drag Race franchise. This one went home on the second season of RuPaul's Drag Race. She came back for season three. And since then, she has been this unstoppable force. She has been in A Star Is Born. She's on HBO's We're Here. She is just what the one of the most successful drag queens of all time. It is Shangela. How are you doing? Well, hello and hallelujah. And I love that kind of intro. Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start recording them and then giving them to you and you can just play them at your shows you know anytime the top of the hour i will drop it right into a joella puss remix and we will go <laughs> ahead and knock it out <laughs> <laughs> now shangela your career is so extensive and it's so crazy to me like looking at it from where it started i remember the first time i saw you it wasn't on drag race i was addicted to dance moms I do not know why I was addicted to Dance Moms. It probably was Abby Lee, you know, doing doing some tomfoolery. But when you came out for Nia and you were teaching her to do, you know, the shablam and doing the, the death drop, like, it was so crazy to me. And I was like, wow. Then slowly after, I caught up on my drag race and I was like, this is who Shangela is. Let me, let me ask you, when... Did you audition for the second season of RuPaul's Drag Race? Do you remember that? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for watching Dance Moms as well. <laughs> I had a lovely time over there, and I was also addicted to watching Miss Abby Lee and the girls and the moms. Like, it was just yes. a perfect storm of everything. And then I remember I loved all the performances on the show, and when I had a chance to go in there, I was like, oh, honey, sign me up. Oh, they're using my music too? Hallelujah. Let me go over here. Today's video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Now, Magic Spoon is literally like cereal reinvented because we all remember, especially I do, uh, getting up in the morning on Saturdays, having my bowl of cereal, watching my cartoons. But then as I started to get older, like I started looking at the nutrition facts, started realizing that cereal is a lot of sugar and not that great for you. But that's where Magic Spoon comes into play. They have this amazing variety pack. And when I say amazing, just uh, make fun of me for a second. They sent me this variety pack. Cocoa, gone. Peanut butter, gone. Frosted, gone. And fruity, I saved some just for this. Uh, literally, it is so good. I ate it in literally like three days. Um, this variety pack, as I said, it comes with cocoa, frosted, fruity, and peanut butter. Peanut butter being my absolute favorite. Great thing about Magic Spoon too is that it has zero grams of sugar. You have 13 to 14 grams of protein, four net carbs per serving, and 140 calories per serving. So you feel a lot better when you eat your cereal. The great thing about Magic Spoon too is that they have a happiness guarantee, which basically means if you don't like their cereal, let them know. They'll refund you your money. But I'm being perfectly honest with you, it is so, so good. So check them out. Link and everything will be in the description below, also right here. Um, and enter code J Shepherd. That's J S H E P H E R D at checkout, so you can get five dollars off your order. Um, I'm gonna enjoy this lovely um, pack of fruity, so I can finish all four of these boxes and um, still feel good about myself. So until next time, thank you so much, Magic Spoon. Bye. So that being said, in 2000 and 2010, um, I had just been doing drag for about five months. I'd only done drag on stage 10 times at the time because I was doing a show once every two weeks at the Here Lounge in West Hollywood. And I'd just kind of fallen into doing drag. And I remember that the casting people from Drag Race, were they were at one of my shows. And they're like, oh, my God, you need to audition for our show. We have a show called RuPaul's Drag Race. And I was like, oh, I remember telling my friend Ron, no, I don't think I'm about to be on TV as no woman. Nope, not going to do it. And he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> and I was like, I haven't even told my family I was doing drag. I've only done it 10 times. Like, I, no way. 
And um, he was like, well, let's do it. Let's let's go for it. Let's try it. And I remember thinking, they're not going to pick me, but sure, I'll do the audition. Sure. And they ended up selecting me. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I thought, okay, well, you know what? The prize at the time was $20,000. And I said, oh, baby, I'm about to win this 20 grand and make all my dreams come true. Okay, this is what's going to happen. And so I prepared. I was, baby, you couldn't tell me I wasn't winning. I went over there to season two. And within two days, I was back at the house with all my bags and all my things. And I said, what have I done? What did I do? But I didn't I didn't give up. I just kept working. Let's think about Shangela. Like I came into the experience of Drag Race People say, like, why do you think Drag Race works for you? And it's just, for me, and it's different for everyone, but for me, I was a worker. I had a worker mentality going into Drag Race. You know, that's how I was raised. That's who I was. And so afterwards, when it was out, you know, uh, Joseph, we used to have three months lead time between when they made the announcement, like, all right, here's the girls. You know, they would put that up in, like, November. And yeah. then in January, late January, the show would premiere. So you had a good two to three months when once your name was announced, everyone who knew me from performing and how I performed, they said, oh, baby, are you winning? And I would just tell them, you'll want to book me now. I'm just telling you, you'll want to put me on the books now because if not, what, my number's going to go up, baby, when the show comes out. And so I was like on the phone calling clubs. You know, this is right when touring just kind of started for the Drag Race Girls. Nobody knew that people would come out and see us, so they didn't really book us. But I was on that phone. I was saying, baby, I got, I would switch my voice like I was my own manager. And I was like, I've got Shangela, so, you know, you better book her. And I had an email, like, you know, manager at Shangela.com. It was just me. And at the time, I didn't have a team or anything like that, but I knew that I wanted to, I had three months that people thought that I was going to, you know, go far on the show Mm -hmm. before it came out. And that's when I started booking. So by the time the show aired and I was the first girl gone, I was under contract with all these other clubs to perform. I was booked. And so they had to keep me and they did. And I just remember thinking, okay, I'm in the business of repeat customers going here Show them why they booked you, mama. Just turn it out. And that's why I was. I was death dropping. I was turning it out. I was giving 110% at every show. So I wasn't known as the girl who went home first. I was known mm-hmm. as Shangela, the performer. Yeah, and I think that that's such a big part of you and your legacy is being this amazing performer and taking every opportunity. Like, I, going into your history, I want to read this because I saw this and I want you to confirm this. In your early years, one of Shangela's first performances in drag was at the age of 16 in 10th grade when DJ had a book report for his English class, and it was about Huck Finn, and he changed Proud Mary by Tina Turner. Is that true? Uh, That is true. I don't know if it was the very first. This is before Shangela. This is just a little Mm -hmm. DJ, but I love to perform, and I love to dress up, and I did two reports. There was one Huck Finn, I performed Rolling on the River. I had rewritten the song, uh, Proud Mary, Don't Tell Tina. Uh, and I had rewritten the song to be Huck and Jim rolling down the river. And I came in there dressed as uh, Tina and did a full-on performance. Another one, I did a, a report around the same time about this lady named Corey Tim Boom. And it was, Mm -hmm. uh, we were reading books about, you know, people who were great allies or, or, you know, helping people out during the Holocaust. And Corrie Ten Boom was one of the ladies who had uh, helped to, you know, shield people or, or, or hide them. And I just remember I went, I had to went to my grandma and I was like, I need to borrow one of your dresses. And she was like, my dresses? For what? I was like, it's for school. They're, they're asking me to do it. It's school. (laughs) It was just me. I wanted to do it. I had two softballs that I put in a pair of pantyhose and dropped the softballs and then swung it around my neck and wore them as my, you know, my little boobies to dance for Corey. And I had a Corey tip boom there. I said a Corey, a Corey, a Corey tip boom. I said a Corey, a Corey tip boom. She helped the people. Oh, I was doing it. Bitch, they loved me so much. They brought me back for three other class periods to perform Corey tip boom. Stop this right now. Did you, wait, wait, I have a question. Did you go to a, a private school? Because I read that book too. Is The Hiding Place? Yes, yes, yes. And no, I did not go to a private school. I went to Interesting. Paris Independent School District. That's Paris, Texas, Public School Fish. Hallelujah. 
Oh, that's so funny that you said that you would take the lyrics of songs and change them because I did that. I did not want to do a geometry math project one time. And so I asked my teacher, I said, can I make a video presentation? I wrapped the lyrics of Fergie's Fergalicious, but it was sine, <laughs> cosine, and tangent. Yes. I was like, this it's what you do, what you do when you're creative. Thank you. Very true. I remember we had a, my best friend, Sonica, and I had a tessellations project. I'll never forget the word tessellation. That was the geometry thing. The tessellations, bitch, we waited to the last minute, and all I wanted to do was sing about the tessellation. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so you you back to drag race you get on this show you were in season two you end up going home you know first and you started a tradition you know you started that tradition of writing that lipstick message was that all intended like did production tell you that or was that something you were just like i'm leaving something well no production did not tell me that and i <laughs> never knew i was actually going to be starting a trend i just didn't have a chance to talk to the girls again because you know they send you home so i was like oh i want to leave them a note but i didn't have like a pen and paper and you know before they started leaving notes in everyone's stations so i thought well girl i'm just gonna leave them a message up here on the mirror and they'll see it when they come back in and that was it and, you know, looking at that, too, you know, that was your last moment. You also had RuPaul, as you were leaving, say that he has a feeling we haven't seen the last of you yet. And those were the most true words I have ever come from his mouth. Yeah. You get back in season three. You pop out of this box. And did you, you said that you had auditioned for season three again. Did they even see your tape or did they call you beforehand? That was the crazy thing. Like, I it, I was going back and forth in my head. Like, I really would like to go back. And they never had anyone to come back before on a separate season. And I knew that I just, I wanted to try again. And my friend Ron said, well, why don't we put in an audition? I'm like, okay. And this is when they were accepting the audition tapes. I don't know how it does how they do it now. But at the time, they were like, maybe it's a Vimeo or something. You have to film it and submit the video online and I remember doing the take and I, I oh god I'll never forget this I was sitting at Ron's house I had my little black bra on and I was sewing but I wasn't really sewing but I knew that sewing was the thing that got me sent to the house the lack of knowledge so I was sitting there I was like well it's been a year and I have figured out how to sew I you know my little cute trying to tell them and all what and then I made a funny intro video um, about me seeing corn everywhere and it haunting me and uh, the videos on Funny or Die, I think you can look it up, Shangela season three audition, something somewhere. And uh, I sent it in and I waited. And then I got an email like a week later and it was just saying, hi, Shangela, you know, we're, we're calling from casting. Um, we have this great idea. We would love to have you come back on the show. We've seen your progress over the year. I had gone away. I had won this pageant, California Entertainer of the Year. Yes. Um, I had been booked everywhere. Remember, they saw me just working. And, and I got a role on television. My first job, uh, I had auditioned for this role of Michaela, the prostitute with a heart of gold, honey, who was helping the police find the killer of my friend, who I, we found in the dumpster. And uh, it was on a show called Terriers on FX with Donald Logue. <laughs> and Michael J Raymond James and I was like so I was doing so much stuff they said we'd love to have you back and I thought oh my god you guys like my tape and they said what tape they hadn't even <laughs> logged in to start looking at the videos yet they hadn't even gotten there but so that's how it was so like amazing and divine they said we're gonna do it but we don't want anyone to know you're gonna be on the show it's gonna be a surprise so when everyone was announced with the cast and all of that in November my name was not included, and I didn't come out in the promo until after the first episode. So it was a lot to keep quiet, but it was really cool. What was that reaction like? Like, the home reaction and stuff when people didn't even expect you? Like, did was that crazy? Well, baby, I came in a box, okay? A bo no box has ever been the same on RuPaul's Driver. You can't even have no kind of box. A jewelry box, a box of cereal. Like, no box is safe on Drag Race. Shangela's coming out of somewhere. <laughs> They always think so. They always think so. And the response, honestly, um, I think it was funny because the girls' response in the room was very mixed. Like, 
Some people were like, okay, yeah, I remember her, the, the girl who was here one episode. And I knew some of the girls from L.A. Like, I knew Raja, and I knew, um, who else was on season three that I knew? I knew Raja, and I knew Delta. Um, maybe that's all I knew. But I knew Raja, and I knew Delta. I'm just trying mm -hmm. to, in my head, I can't think of anybody else that I knew off the top of my head, but, oh, and I knew Venus, I knew of Venus, for sure, because we had worked the LA scene together, so I was like, oh, well, they're going to be happy to see me, but no, not everyone was happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I absolutely love your stint on season three, I think that's when we got to see the Shangela that you are, and to see how big of a workhorse you are, to see the drive that you put, the amount of energy and the amount of like everything you have so many iconic moments like looking at your stint on season three is there a moment that you were the most proud of <laughs> oh lord you're taking me back you know that was like almost a decade ago now can you Isn't imagine that, that crazy i know i it's it's re it blows my mind because i watch it you know drag race you can catch it in so many places mm -hmm. now and when I see season three, I look at myself and I'm like, wow. Because honestly, like my hair color is a little lighter now because I have color. But I think I look almost exactly the same. So it's really funny to me to watch it and think, wow, that was like 10 years ago. And there have been so many seasons of Drag Race since then. I think in that season, I was so raw. And, um, you know, it was before Drag Race was on so much that it became part of all of our lives and our dialogue and our conversation, how we chat. And then everything we did, we didn't know, we didn't have in our heads like, okay, I want to be perceived by the fans like this, or I better not say this because I want to be perceived a certain way. There was yeah. none of that. So we just were very unfiltered in that way. Uh, I'd say the thing I was most proud of um, would have been, oh my gosh, I, and even me watching it now, I see myself like I was a, I was a baby drag queen, even still. I never carried myself in my mind as a baby drag queen. I always was like, I came here to win, bitch, I'm about to tear it up. I'm about to, and then that's when they first raised the money. They filmed it a couple different times. RuPaul said, and your grand prize is $75,000. And we were like, is that for real or is he playing? Because then they'd say, okay, we're going to do it this time. We're going to do it one more time, guys. We're going to do 100000 So RuPaul would go, and ladies, the grand prize is $100,000. And we were like, is she joking? Because last season, the prize was $20,000. <laughs> so who got a raise over here? Are they playing games or what? We didn't know if it was real or not. We were just like, is this for real? $100,000. So I think the thing that I was most proud of is the fact that I just never gave up on myself. Um, in watching that season, it's hard sometimes because there were, it was very emotional for me because a lot of the friendships that I thought I had were challenged there. Um, I, I, I always walk into a room, you know, because I like everybody. That's just my mentality. I like everybody. And I thought everybody liked me. And I remember being on the runway because we would all, I mean, there was one thing with all of us in the workroom, but when they cut the cameras, you know, this is back before things got really strict with, you know, you can't talk to each other, you can't. So we were in the van, we'd be kicking, like playing music. And on the weekends, we had the weekends off at the hotel. They used to let us all get together. I remember um, Carmen was the only person that knew how to cut hair, like with a set of clippers. And she used to edge up people, like Manila need to edge up. She was like, come on girl, I'll shave. And they would get so mad, production would, because we'd leave on a Friday, Manila would have hair, then she'd come back on a Monday and she had a haircut. And it wasn't for continuity. They were like, this doesn't make sense. What are you guys doing? And like people would leave upset on Friday and then on Monday come back and everything's been patched up and they'd be like, okay, so let's go back to where you guys were upset. We're like, oh no, we're not mad at each other anymore. We talked about it. And they're like, talked about it where? At the hotel. We were hung out all weekend at the pool. And they're like, oh, so that's when they started separating us and like locking us in rooms and, you know, no phone, no computer. You can't talk to each other. Everyone's on ice. So that means like be quiet. Everyone's on ice. So, um, yeah, that's. I just remember that though. It was just a very emotional time because when we were on the runway, 
if you've seen, you obviously, and those who have seen season three will know that during the cakes challenge was the very first time RuPaul had ever said, ladies, I'm going to ask you a question. Who do you think should go home tonight and why? That was the very first time she had done that. And the girls all started saying me. Ella, I want a serious answer from you. I would like to see Shantla go. She's just a loud <laughs> mouth, and she's always talking and alleluing. Raja. Stacy and Shangela, get the fuck out. Tell me why. Oh, Stacy, I, you know, I'm not sure if she's ready. And Shangela, although your personality shines, I think you should be on season five or six. That's where you should be. And they were saying me, and it wasn't for reasons like, you know, she can't sew or she's not doing a good job. It was personal stuff, like she talks too much, she won't shut up, she keeps saying hallelujah. And I was like, Really, bitch? These are my. I thought we were we were just kikiing yesterday, mm -hmm. so when no one had ever said any of this to my face, so I I just watched that and I was like I can see in my face like my feelings were hurt. That's the biggest yeah. thing. That's why sometimes season three is hard to go back and watch. And then like all of that, like Booger Heather versus like, it, I mean we're all past it now. But I just yeah. remember in the time no one ever said any of that stuff to my face and watching it, because you know, we see it for the first time at the same time everyone sees it, Joe. Everyone sees it all at the same time. So I remember having like viewing parties or being booked at clubs, watching it on TV and hearing all this stuff that people were saying about me, they never said to my face. It was all in the confessional rooms and it just hurt my feelings so much because I never, I mean, we were all loose at the lips <laughs> and probably all can are guilty of saying things about others and we're like, okay, that wasn't, that wasn't cute, girl. But I just never remember t attacking anyone personally for anything like they talked to me. It, it was just yeah. difficult for me to see. But it came around, we all got past it, thankfully, and I can say that some of the people from season three are still some of my greatest friends. Oh, that, that's so nice to hear. I love that, like, you know, you can actually form a sisterhood with the girls um i we're gonna get back into season three and then of course the rest of your career and everything but i do want to pop in some fan questions because you have buttloads of fans oh come on buttloads <laughs> buttloads all the buttloads um kai miro says have you ever been offered to dj because your name is dj <laughs> I cannot escape this question. This happened to me in Chicago as well. Everyone thinks I'm a DJ because my name is DJ. It is not. I am not. I do not have that talent. I, I don't. I'm, maybe one day. But in this moment today, I am not a DJ. My initials stand for Darius Jeremy. That's, what, that's my name. So ever since the second grade, I've always gone by DJ. It's what my family calls me. It's just my name. Will I ever DJ? Who knows, honey? Paris Hilton did. So if Miss Hilton exactly. can get out there, look. For, but I love jumping in DJ booths with the DJs just to like be a hype man. I love yes. music. I love parties. I love festivals. And I have some really talented DJ friends like from all over the world, from like Brazil, DJ Tommy Love, or DJ Suri from Spain. Yes. Um, ben Baxton's a great friend. Uh, Christopher, like Paolo, just so many great DJs that I know. Um, yeah, it's amazing. But no, that's not my skill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hit up Paris Hilton though. I think I'm gonna ask her, be like, hey, can there be a Shangela and Paris tour? You guys can just travel and you just stand there. You're her hype man. Thank you. I, you know, I will jump. My calves always hurt because I'm a jumper. I love to jump to the beat, like jump, jump. When I can't dance, I just jump. And my calves the next day are like, now, nah, bitch, you wear pumps, okay? Be careful with these calves. <laughs> Wait, do you ever do, like, dance or Zumba classes? Like, do you still, like, do dance stuff now or no? Um, well, I don't do Zumba classes. I always, I'm, my mom, I'm always on her about trying to be more fit and mm -hmm. do more activity. So I'm like, come on, mom, let's get on YouTube and, like, look up a class. And you know who's a friend of mine now is Sean T., and I, like, he's awesome and amazing. I, you know, am always on his Instagram. He's been on a, a podcast of mine before. We've talked. And I, like, love doing, like, random Shanti dances. I, I think my own, I don't Zumba, but I TikTok dance. Does that count? Yes. Yeah, I think that okay. that counts. You're TikTok yeah. dancing. I mean, I saw your dance. whole little, 
You, you, Bob, and Eureka have been been the TikTok <laughs> stars recently. <laughs> yeah, I blame that on Bob, girl. I blame that on Bob because Bob loves him some TikTok, and he'll just roll up on you. We're on the set uh, filming. We're here season two, and Bob will just roll up with that camera and put it there and have all these different, like, pop that pop. And I don't, you know, I'm Shangela, the working girl, and I, I know everyone else is working too, but I that's... I'm usually not on TikTok that much. So Bob knows all the new dances, all the new crazes he wants us to do. And I'm like, here she come again with that phone, child. But all right. <laughs> the next fan question I have is from Patricia Del Bell. She wants to know, are you excited for the Game of Thrones prequel, House of the Dragon, coming out in 2022? The answer is yes, okay? And I'm going to tell you why, because... Anyone who watched All Stars 3 knows that I, <laughs> because I was obsessed with Game of Thrones. I ain't pulling the lipstick from the broad titty because I still need allies in this game. Oh, so that's Cersei Lannister. I see now. But here come the dragons. I'm Daenerys, bitch. And it was because, and the reason I brought it up so much during All Stars 3 uh, Drag Race is because I just watched it. And also, when we would finish. Uh, HBO Go at the time, before HBO Max, HBO Go was on the hotel television for free. Mm. So when we would finish Drag Race and I wanted to like just decompress for the day and you couldn't talk to anyone else in the hotel, all I had was HBO and I was watching Game of Thrones. So when I go back to the confessional, they're like, so how did you feel? I said, oh, I felt very uh, Cersei Lannister today. It was very Daenerys, I am the mother of dragons. Everything was Game of Thrones, because that's what I was watching. So um, yes, any more Game of Thrones, throw it at me. I think one of the best dates I've ever been on, uh, this guy in New York was like, I'd like to surprise you, I want to take you on a date. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. You know, I don't really have a lot of time Today, so sure, what, what what are you gonna do? He didn't want to tell me. He took me to Madison Square Garden, okay? No, he didn't rent the whole thing for me. It's not that kind of day. It's ain't Jay Lo. Okay, but uh, he, his company had a, a suite, and we get there, and it was uh, Game of Thrones live. So they basically played Game of Thrones on the Madison Square Garden screens and had the orchestra there to play all of the scored music wow. to those scenes like the red wedding or you know um just all the major scenes they had and, the, and then there were dancers that would come out and beautifully like contemporary dance to the live orchestra playing all games of thrones music i swear i was glued this guy knew me no we didn't go on any more dates after that <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't live in New York. He lives in New York. It just wasn't going to work out. But um, I, I always tell everyone that is one of my favorite dates ever. So, uh, guys, if you want to pick up Shangela, what you need to do <laughs> is <laughs> you have to one up that date. Um, you have to cosplay. You have to cosplay as um, as John Stark. Uh, and you, <laughs> no, don't do that, please. But actually. Don't do that. You actually need to recreate a dragon, make sure it is mechanical and can move and can fly. And there we go. And breathes fire. Yes, please. Yes, yes please. Yes. Um, the last question is from Lainey Williams. She wants to know, Shanji, what was it like being in the Kitty Girl music video? Was it tough to do? Oh, my gosh. That was the finale. I'm going to tell you. I was so happy by that point because my goal on All Stars 3 really was, I just wanted to come back and show people how hard I had worked over the last years in order to be the drag entertainer that I had become. I kind of grew up and I wanted just to represent that. And I had brought so many cool things that I wanted to wear on the show. Cause you know, they give you a list before you come and they say, okay, you know, we're gonna throw some curveballs at you, but please be prepared with uh, one of the runways will be a red, you know, red for Phil, so something red. One of the runways is going to be your glow up. One of the runways is going to be space, or, you know, all that. So you bring those items. And I remember I had uh, my red inflatable outfit. And every episode when we finish and make it to another one, 
they would call, that's when you get which category is coming next. And I just remember thinking, God, please let me stay long enough to wear my inflatable red dress. I want to wear it so bad, badly. And they never called the category until the la next to last episode. And I was, and I kept making it like, oh, I'm still on one. I'm still on. I want to wear my red. And so finally I got to wear it. I was so happy. So the next one after that was Kitty Girl. I was already living. I had worn all my clothes that I brought. Those things you see me wear, those are the last outfits I had in the bag. If they call any more categories, I was like, going to have to make it something off the wall. And y'all know that was going to turn out horrible. So, <laughs> so I was so excited. I had worn all my clothes. And so when we did the Kitty Girl Music video, I was like, oh, baby, it's a performance number. Oh, thank God. It ain't going to be nothing sewing. It's just performance. I'm ready. And Todrick was choreographing. And I just, I remember asking Todrick, and he'll tell you this too, um, when we got the choreography, I was a little shaken at first because I was, you know, we get to see everyone else learning theirs too, choreography. And I was like, now hold on. Now BB is sitting down over here at this sewing machine. Kennedy, she was coming out the back of a truck, honey. She was kicking and twirling and all that. But, and Trixie was doing, you know, five, six, seven, seven, slow, slow, turn, pie in the face. And then I looked at my choreography and I'm dancing, I'm coming off a box, I'm jumping over wood, I'm dodging wood, I'm walking down a whole hallway. I got I said, Tajik, are y'all trying to set me up? Are y'all trying to set me up to go home? Because everybody I feel like the other people have a little slightly different choreo than me. That's a little easier. I feel a setup, Todrick. And he was like, no, honey, they're not trying to set you up. It's just we know you can handle choreo and we want you to do be able to deliver what you deliver. And I was like, okay, well with that. Mama, I'm ready to work. And I was so I was so happy with the choreo. I loved the dancers. It was just like a it was a production. And I loved the production. And it wasn't even like there was a lot of nerve that it was the challenge. Because the song was good. And I remember, look, I've been writing lyrics ever since the 10th grade. Okay, you remember Corey Tim Boom and Rolling Down the River? <laughs> So this was another English project to me, baby. I said, okay, let's step aside. I'm back again. And I wanted to put in my verse things that were about my journey. And I remember um, I wanted, you know, people have sometimes a hard time pronouncing my name. I don't know why. They call me Shagala, Shangela, Shangri-La, Shagina. Shagala? Shagala, yes. I've been called, oh, this, oh, but the other day, this is the best. I was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and this man said to me, oh my God, oh my God, Angela. Angela, I'm your biggest fan. Oh, I love you, Angela. And I just couldn't even correct him. I was just dying laughing. I said, thank you, baby. And he's a hold on, honey. And his husband was there. He said, baby, look, it's Angela. It's Angela. And I said, thank you. Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to put it Shangela in my mix, you know, in the verse. And it just all worked out. And to this day, when they play that song in the club, I get my whole life. They know, baby. Just watch Miss Shannon because she's going to perform her part. She's going to perform You still her part. perform your part. Baby, no matter where I am, I can hear it. I can be in the bathroom. And if they put on Kitty Girl, I'm going to make it for Step Aside, I'm Back Again. I'll do it right now. Step Aside, I'm Back Again. So hype, so lit, adrenaline. I'm Shan, Jeff, let's say what? I started as a baby now. I'm all grown up. Going to take this verse just to let you know. Never listen to the haters. Be a pro because I work my way, pay my dues. Now I got the whole world screaming. Hallelujah. There you go. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, speaking speaking of your time on All Stars, we're gonna get a little into that. I want to go into a little game that we call "What is the Tea?" Ooh, a game! I love games. So you just have to spill the tea on what was the tea and what's happening, and you can always say "pass" if for some reason you don't want to say it. So here oh, we go. Okay. During season during season three, was there an extended two to three week break? Yes, there was, and it it came right after episode two, and I remember we went in the next morning, we were, hadn't gotten in drag or anything like that yet, and they came in and said, guys, we're going to send you all guys back home, and we thought, the hotel? They're like, no, home, home, and we're going to come back, don't worry, we, we're going to be taking like a, it's about a two to three week break, and I remember thinking, oh my God, like, they ran out of money. Because, you know, it was early. And yeah. I thought maybe the show had been canceled. It, no one ever told us the reason. There was no mm -hmm. specific to the reason. We were all just sent home. And they said, don't worry, though. We're going to call you and you're going to come back. And we're going to pick up right where we left off. Wow. 
And the good thing about that though, okay, so this is back in the day, right? When we get there, you know, they take your phone, they take your computer, you meet the girls and you do the season and that's it. But because we had this break, honey, everybody, and they said, you can only take one bag home and you must come back with that same one size bag. All the rest of your things you have to leave here. Okay. Baby, we went home, and at that point, we had met all the girls. We started Googling and YouTubing to see what, who, you know, what were the talents of who, who was a dancing yes. girl, who was not, who did, you know, who does what kind of shows. I was very Nancy Drew, honey. I went home. I, I was investigation fish, and I was yes. just searching because I wanted to understand the girls better to try and strategize the competition a little better. And also, I remember going home and thinking, okay. Those girls came with fully rhinestone costumes. I got to get my stuff together. I was at home trying to figure out where to get more costumes. That one bag I brought back, baby, was stuffed so tight with new clothes. <laughs> it didn't help me any, though. Didn't help me any. But still, I was very excited when we got that break. And then because we had that break, I was able to go. Uh, I had won, like I told you, the year before that, I had won California Entertainer of the Year pageant. Mm -hmm. I love the pageant system. I love pageants. And I had qualified to go on to National Entertainer of the Year. And I wasn't going to be able to go because that fell right in the time of filming Drag Race. When we had the break, I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to be open for the pageant. Well, girl, let me get my things together. And I, so I, during that whole break, I was preparing for the pageant. And I went to National EOI, my first national ever pageant competition, and won first runner-up, which is second place. Whoa, wait a second. So you had your two to three week break. You had already been like, I am not going to do um, Entertainer of the Year. Hadn't prepared anything. And then during that time, you prepared and did it and then got runner up. Baby made an intro video to Twilight, the breaking of the dawn. I had saw got the that. dancers together, put together a whole pageant, called Alyssa. She came and performed in my number at National EOI. This one is, um, it, it was just so, I was so thrilled to be able to go to the pageant. Because if you don't go and you're the representative, you forfeit being able to go again or something like that. So it was just really cool. That, and that was the last pageant I ever competed in. But um, I, I'll never forget, I was so excited. So I didn't really have a, you know, it's changed. I don't really take many breaks anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I was able to go to the pageant. And then I came back to the competition really thinking I was somebody, honey. Because when they called us back, I had already won first runner up in National EOI. I was like, oh baby, I'm about to take this check, honey. I'm about to take this drag race crown. <laughs> <laughs> It did not happen for me. But, 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 I mean, you've, you've, you've maintained the relevancy of Shangela for quite some time in your career. Like, like, going into this even more, you were on Glee with Lee Michelle and Sarah Jessica Parker and Let's Have a Kiki. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. When, I'm telling you right now, when I'm going to put together a, uh, there's a, pro a project in the works right now. I'm writing a book. Um, of all of my never thought this would happen type encounters, it, SJP was one of them. I remember being in the rehearsal studio. And get this, this is when I met for the first time. You know, of course, I know you're familiar with Ariana Grande. Duh. Uh, Ariana's creative directors and good friends, uh, Brian and Scott. Okay, Brian and Scott, the twins. They back up dance with her and they've creatively directed a million things for her in videos. Anyway, that was one of their first jobs. They had just moved to LA. And see, I had already done Drag Race season three at this point. So I was, I was the, you know, I was trying to school them on how to make it in Hollywood. I was telling, now boys, this is very important. You, you have a great look, you're twins, you're great dancers. You know, we've all booked this job here at Glee. So just stay focused, don't do drugs. Don't get sidetracked. If y'all came out here with a dream, baby, if, if your homegirl Shangela can make it, so can you. So, And now here they are, like two of the biggest creative director, dancer guys. It was funny. So on that set, we're in the rehearsal room, and in walks Sarah Jessica Parker. They didn't tell any of us that she was a special guest. She just comes in the rehearsal and to learn Let's Have a Kiki. And I remember, like, they said, we need someone to stand right here next to Sarah. Bitch, my hand went up so fast. Me, I want to stand next to Sarah. I want to stand next to Sarah. And I, I didn't say anything to her for the first, like, hour and a half. Like, nothing. I was like, I don't want to freak her out or make her 
like uncomfortable. But when we had our first break, I just was like, Miss Parker, I just, I'm so sorry. I just want to say I'm a huge, huge fan of yours. Sex in the City is like, has been one of my favorite shows. And, and it's just such a gift to be here with you today. And she goes, she looked right at me. She goes, oh, Shangela, I know who you are, girl. And I could have died right there. <gasps> like, I was like, what? And apparently she was doing a film. I think, if I get this right, she was doing a film called um, I Don't Know How She Does It. It was a movie of hers, and she said that during the whole time that she was filming the movie, in the hair and makeup trailer, her hairstylist and makeup artists, they were obsessed with Drag Race. So they would put it on every day while she was getting her hair and her makeup done. So that's how she watched all of season three, and that's why she was like, I know you, girl. And I'm like, ah! So we went to lunch. We went to lunch together and like hung out. And I just remember like now, even when I see that, Bob and Eureka and I perform Let's Have a Kiki sometimes uh, we're here. And I'm just like, they're like, all right, girl, we're going to meet to rehearse. I'm like, oh, baby, <laughs> I done had that choreography since 2012, baby. I'm good. <laughs> you had lunch with Sarah Jessica Parker. That's like, I mean, that is a down. moment. And at the time, she was campaigning so hard for Obama she was mm-hmm. like, I'm on the campaign trail with Obama. Um, and she just, you know, she was giving me her stories about being a mom. She was just amazing. She was a doll. She was a sweetheart. And she's everything that I hoped. You know, when you meet celebrities sometimes that you look up to on television, you just mm-hmm. hope they'll be as just what you built them up to be in your head. And she was all that and more. Oh, I, I'm just like so dumped on about it. That's, that's crazy to me. Um, we will get into, um, of course, another celebrity of yours in a second, you know, Lady Gaga and A Star is Born and your Beyonce in the Glad, and we're going to get right into that. But we need to finish this All Stars out so we can get to all of that. Girl, we need to talk about this time. The most amazing time where you were on my TV screen, your multiple coming. costumes, you method acting as Mariah Carey, you putting all of this out there. Let First of all, you method acting as Mariah Carey was the funniest thing. Was that was that the truth, or were you wanting to make a scene? Miss Mariah Carey. She is on another level today. Oh my God, Shangela doing her whole Mariah fantasy. Girl, she's pissing me off. Well, the thing. <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be good, and I don't think I've ever told this story before. So you and your listeners are really getting it today. Um, <laughs> They gave us, they assigned us who our pop diva was going to. They said when we were home um, that one of the categories was going to be like a something maybe like pop starry. So bring something for that. And I remember I had, I was like, oh, one of the pop stars I love is Mel B from Spice Girls. So I had the Mel B wig made with the two bonds in the front and the big uh-huh. hair, right? So that's what I thought I was going to be doing. And then they assigned us. Uh, before we left still from home. By the way, also bring a Mariah Carey look. That's what they told me. I said, oh, a Mariah. So I was looking up different Mariah looks and I'm like, oh, there was one time where she showed up to an interview in lingerie. So I said, well, for my Mariah look, I have these giant pumps that are like seven inches tall and I want this black negligee and a black robe and dark sunglasses. That's gonna be my Mariah. Okay, with the butterfly headpiece. That's my Mariah. And when we got there and found out that we were I was doing Mariah, but it was going to be in like a concert type mm-hmm. challenge. I was like, well, I can't wear lingerie. I mean, I can't wear the lingerie. Michelle Visage is going to look at me, and I know what she's, she's going to be like, Shangela, it's lingerie. You know, <laughs> she was like, you, you wore lingerie. It's just lingerie, girl. You know, and I was like, okay, I don't want that. So I pulled out my other Mariah look, and I remember thinking like, well, I'm not going to be able to wear my cute black robe. <laughs> so I decided, you know what? I'm going to wear the girls out. Because I knew they, I wanted, one thing about Drag Race, and you can see this, I talk all about All Stars 3 episode by episode in a, a stand-up comedy show that I released for free on YouTube called Shangela is Shook. People can go over there for free, just type in Shangela is Shook, you get all the tea. And I wanted to, going back to All Stars 3, that I didn't get to do in, in Drag Race season 3, I wanted to have fun too, okay? I was so stressed during Drag Race season three because 
you know, everyone was coming for me. I'd only been doing drag a year. I was the first girl ever brought back. I didn't want to let RuPaul down. People were, you know, who I thought were friends were not being friends in those moments. And I was in arguments with people, you know, the Mimi on first thing, all of that. I was just so like on edge the whole time during season three of Jerry's. I wasn't necessarily having a lot of fun. So in watching the show for years, and I'm like, oh, well, the girls have fun these days. I want to have fun too. So I wanted, that's why I came out there. I wasn't trying to like piss them off. I just wanted to play with them and have, make fun, have fun. Uh, like I, I, and that was another moment. You know, I think you know extremely well how to get your good moments. You have, you have quite, quite so many <laughs> moments on there. Um, so you end up in the finale of All Stars 3. And, oh, baby, your face. That face crack when the votes didn't come through. Let me ask you a question. Did you expect anybody to vote for you? Oh, that's, that's a hard one. Um, I hate seeing that face. <laughs> and it comes up in so many memes. So many places, I was devastated in the moment. But um, because I just, I felt like I worked so hard to get so far and I felt like I, I really had earned a spot in the top two. I didn't care necessarily about winning. I wanted to win and I was ready to turn it out. You know, I had some stunts and tricks up under that gold coat. I was ready to twirl for the wrecking ball. But um, when they said that the girls were coming back and they were going to vote for us, I just knew that it, there was a very strong chance it was not going to work in my favor. And I'll tell you why. Because, you know, All Stars was set up in a way that you have to, the power is put on us to send people home. That's never fun, right? People, no one wants to send anyone home. I know what it's like to be sent home, to go home from Rue. So, but I kept winning. And when you win, you had to choose a lipstick. You had to send someone home. Well, I had already at that point, there were six girls on the jury. Three of them I had sent to the house. So I was like, and you gotta think, we filmed the whole season in a course of three weeks. So by the time these girls came back, they had just been in the hotel, just steaming, basically, yeah. uh, all the way up until this point. And I knew that not enough time had gone by. None of us had been able to talk since we, they got voted out because we're not able, able to talk to each other. So you couldn't really mm -hmm. like explain, you know, there was no patching things up. So I felt like, okay, those three girls I sent home are pro probably still salty. They're gonna, nope, not gonna vote for me. And then I just knew that the other three, you know, some had alliances with other people. It just wasn't gonna work in my favor. They, they were not sham fans sitting over there. <laughs> When I went into the moment to plead my case, you know, we walk into that room and I just remember the glare. There was like, it was like I wasn't even looking at people that I knew and Kiki with and my friends. And maybe it's because production had told them to, you know, death stare us to death when we came in. But I was like, <laughs> okay. I, you know, I walk in, I'm like, hi, ladies. And they're like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit, it's going down. <laughs> so I was like, these girls are not trying to hear me today. They, and then it, it was even worse because when they watched the, uh, the Kitty Girl video, when, it, when the video ended, the judges just went down the line and they just, I mean, they gave me the most beautiful, glowing response. And maybe it's because they knew that the other girls were not featuring me. So the judges, like Ross was like, Shangela, you know, when I look at this video and I look at you, all I see is a star. And I'm just so proud of you. And and so you're getting celebrated by all the judges in front of a jury of girls that have been sent home that aren't ever going to be celebrated in this way for this particular moment, something that they also wanted a lot. So I, I mean, I didn't think I wasn't going to get, you know, any votes or just the one vote from Thorgy. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. But I remember, God rest her soul, uh, one of the uh, major producers from the show, Jacqueline, who was my story producer as well, Jacqueline Wilson. Um, yes, I, I just want to make sure I'm not saying her name, last name wrong, but Jacqueline. She was great, and she passed away about uh, two years ago. But I remember her telling me, because after the show, I'm like, 
and the show hadn't premiered yet, but we had finished filming it. And I would see her out at the bar in West Hollywood. And she's like, how are you holding up? You all right? I'm like, I'm okay, girl. I'm okay. I've talked to the girls. They've all told me, you know, that they hated the way it ended or whatever, whatever. And she was tell she would look at me because she was like, she had that eye that was like, mm-mm. She was like, mm-mm. I, I can't tell you what happens, but I'm going to let you know. We're going to air how everyone voted. We're going to air it. So you just wait till you see that before you start accepting everyone's, you know, we're all homegirls, we're all sisters. She was like, mm-mm, Shangela, mm-mm, it didn't go down right, baby. And I was like, really? Because everyone has told me that they voted for me. And she's like, mm-mm, they don't know, but we're going to release the whole, how everybody voted. And that, because one of the girls, I'm not going to say who, but one had called me and said, girl, I can't believe they didn't put you in the top. I voted for you, girl. You got all my votes. And I was like, thank you Stop. so much, sis. Thank you so much. And then when it aired, baby, she didn't give me not one vote. And I said, well. And she and then she tried to clean it up with me. She told me, girl, um, the reason it looks like that is because they told me wrong. They told me the lipsticks that we don't pick were the ones that we're going to go through. And the... Now, Mrs. Thing. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Liar, liar. But it's okay. It's okay. I did, I'm okay. And I always tell that to my fans. I'm like, you know, I get it. it they still come to me to this day and say, mm -hmm. oh, my God, Shangela, you were robbed. And I I just know that I don't walk. I never have, even after not winning season three of Drag Race, being the first bird off of season two of Drag Race, I just knew that. The crown does not define who I am as a queen. I always came to this business to turn it out. I was gonna give 110 no matter what. And whether or not, you know, when I had to go stand in the back and watch the other two girls lip sync, you know, for the crown in the front, it was like, oh, it, that hurt because I just wanted to be there so bad. And I used to have dreams. I would, after I left Drag Race, I would have dreams about what I should have done or maybe what, so maybe I should have just performed the number coming from the back of the stage. Just did, you know, but in the moment I was frozen. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at BB and she was holding my hand because both of us were like, oh. And then to have to, it's not even like you get told no and then you leave the stage. You have to stand there and watch the other people compete. When I just, oh, and I, oh, and I had a pinata. I was gonna be wait, breaking wait, wait. this pinata full of glitter. We need to get into this. So, 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 wrecking ball comes on, and it's like we fall, we change. What are you doing? What's what's the moment? Uh, you you well, have what this actually on. Actually, was doing. I'm stick. You mean what I was planning to do for the stage? What was the plan? Yeah. Oh, baby doll, baby doll. I was like, okay, because you have to understand, I am not only um, a contestant from Drag Race, and you know. It's part of my legacy, but I'm also a fan of Drag Race. So when it comes down to a lip sync, baby, and and you know I was already wrecked when they told us the song was Wrecking Ball. No shade to Miley Cyrus, but it's not an exciting not a, mm. finale kind of. We were all like Wrecking Ball, Wrecking Ball, Wrecking Ball, and so they told us, okay, we know that you ladies may not be prepared for Wrecking Ball. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give each of you a credit of fifty dollars. And you can send one of the PAs to Target. And for $50, you have to make an exciting, amazing number out of Wrecking Ball. And I was like, girl, what is $50? $50 for the Wrecking Ball? $50 in a Wrecking Ball. Bitch, $50 and a Wrecking Ball. Okay, here we go. $50 and a Wrecking Ball. All right, Shani. And I just, I was racking my brain all weekend what can I do to make wrecking ball? I mean, I can't hang a ball. Ultimately, I would have loved to hang a wrecking ball and just swing on that bitch the whole number, you know, but we couldn't do that, right? We got $50 and we're in a studio. We got $50 for Target and we got Target. Target $50, okay? <laughs> so I remember asking Kennedy, what did you do with your $50? She was like, girl, I sent them over there to get me a dance leotard. I said, a dance <laughs> What are you about to do with the dance leotard with fifty dollars? I didn't know. I didn't know what she was doing. Trixie had bought a pair of scissors. I didn't know what was people doing with the fifty dollars. I think BB just kept her fifty dollars. Was like, I'm gonna go shopping when I get to the home. I am going to go to the shopping when I get home. I'm not going to spend my money now, sister. You know. <laughs> so 
So I kept, for my $50, I said, all right, come on, stunt queen. Let's come up with something lovely, baby. So I asked them to buy me, um, I got a, a pinata. I had a sledgehammer, which was up my sleeve of the jacket. Okay, so the sledgehammer is up the sleeve. The pinata was duct taped in the back of the jacket. The, um, and then I had the white bra and panty set, like Miley from the video. I ordered, yeah, ordered. My $50 went a long way, baby. I got a yeah. sports bra and a pair of high-waisted white panties. And then I took balloons and I had put glitter in all of the balloons like filled them with glitter and blew them up and pinned them to my chest and all of my, you know, the front part of the panties and the back of the panties. And then I had a dart, like, you know, darts that you throw mm -hmm. at a thing. Okay, so when the song hit, you know, I the first part I was gonna do with the lovely coat, and then when it came, I came in like a rocket ball, I was gonna open that jacket, take the dart, spam! Uh, bust one of the titty balloons and glitter was gonna shoot out everywhere. I came in like a psh I can't nice. just bust them and bust them in balloons. And then in the part I never meant to start a war, I was gonna get the pinata and I was gonna be looking at the pinata and then the, the sledgehammer was gonna come from nowhere. And then, uh, never, I guess I should have let you in, all that. And then, and I came in like a, I was gonna throw the pinata, bam, hit it with the sledgehammer and glitter and candy was going everywhere, all over the stage. Oh, production, honey. And then production. Then I was going to ride that beat up pinata like a wrecking ball all the way back across the stage. I came in like a psh, glitter still shooting out my butt crack. Oh, it was going to be everything. <laughs> $50, honey. $50. $50, and I mean $50 couldn't even get Asia O'Hara some fake butterflies, so oh. hers wouldn't die. You, you had, you had the moment. So, my, as we're, we're closing all of this out, I want to get into a little bit about your career. You have had such an amazing career after Drag Race. You were in A Star is Born with somebody named Lady Gaga. One question I need, I do have, what does Lady Gaga smell like? Ooh. The doll, the duchess, the grand dame, Gaga, the lady, the LG, the epitome of a hardworking, talented, creative, wonderful person. Well, right now, I'm sure she smells like that Dom Perignon champagne that she's been yes. hawking. Uh, uh, she probably smells like a leftover <laughs> house labs lip pencil. No, she's fabulous. <laughs> she smells like, 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 like kindness. She smells like kindness. Uh, I, I can't really give you much more than that because you know she is when I tell you about hoping that people are as nice or wonderful as you build them up in your head to be she flying colors baby flying colors that woman is a class act and she just she has a way I watch her with other people even like fans she's just sweet she's a sweet person she has sweet family um, and she believes in love she believes in supporting those around her you know i remember asking her in the break when we were filming a star is born by the way i some days i can't even remember i remember please i can't even believe that i am a part of such an amazing film and you know bradley cooper and lady gaga and people watching on the plane sometime and i'm sitting there next to them and i'll just be like i can't wait till my part comes out again and they don't even know it's me, bitch. They don't even know it's me. And I, I had to tap their screen, but baby, that's me right there. That's me with the wig on. That's me, baby. That's me. That's me with the wig. Um, and I remember asking Gaga in one of the breaks, like, because, you know, she, she was so chill when they would be switching the cameras around and stuff. She would just stay there and hang out with the girls. She was like, oh, my God, I love this so much. You know, that was Gaga. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I was telling her, like, how do you keep up with all of your memories like you have so many big moments like i journal do you journal do you like video record yourself like beyonce like what do you do to remember all of these things yeah. that happen in your life and these things and she goes i do write but the biggest way that i remember everything she goes look around the room see right there that's richie my choreographer he's been with me since basically the start i remember when i see him i think of us you know, trying to get into clubs or trying to get DJs to play my music or staying up all night to get this choreography right. I look at Sarah, you know, um, all of my all of my people are 
right here, Freddie and Bobby, her manager, she's like, they have my memories. And that says a lot about someone who has worked with a team for so long, you know, same people for a decade. And she empowers them and they hold each other up. We were just at the Abbey for the Born This Way 10th anniversary yes. in the Abbey, West Hollywood's 30th anniversary. And I remember being there with Bobby and I was there and Bobby was there like, hey, Bobby, oh my God. He's like, hey, Shanji, stay here. You're going to want, and then he called Gaga on FaceTime and she's there. And I'm like, hey girl, you need to get out here, girl. And she was like, you never know. You know, I had no <gasps> clue she was actually coming. And then she came and then all of a sudden we're all in the VIP singing Rain On Me. And oh. I was like, and you know, and this is finally after the hardest year that all of us have had, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to be in that moment and be out there and, you know, be vaccinated and be outdoors and not have to have a mask on and to celebrate with our friends. Oh. It was just a, it was a real celebration. It was mm -hmm. more than a party. It was more than a, it was a moment that we were all able to reunite again. It was like a homecoming bitch. It, and oh. I was there with the Lady Gaga and she saw me and she embraced me like a real hug, like a solid, like, what up, bitch? I miss you, yes. bitch, you know, kind of hug. And and it, yeah, that it was just brilliant and she's brilliant and I'm just so grateful to know amazing people like that, like the Gagas and the Ariana's and the Jennifer Lewis's and just whoever, like I'm, I sometimes I'm not name dropping. I just am grateful that my path has run in conjunction with these people's paths. You know, great friends that have resulted in me being able to perform Beyonce for Beyonce and yeah. her seeing me at the Tyler Perry event and being like, "Hey, Shangela," and I'm like, "Fucking Beyonce!" Just like called me out, like walked over to me, said hello, like. Like, I wanted to scream. And, you know, having a web series with Jennifer Lewis or being on an Ariana Grande track. And now, today, to being, you know, co-hosting We're Here and us being able to have a second season and getting, like, messages. Sometimes I got a, I got a little voicemail once from Charlize Theron, who was, like, my daughters and I love the show and just oh. want to send you love. And I'm like, ah, Charlize Theron! Bitch, Charlie's there. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. J'adore, bitch. J'adore. And so it's it's just really cool because I still feel like I am the kid from Paris, Texas, who mm -hmm. grew up wanting to just make people laugh and smile and have fun, being able to help and support my family. You know, and with the pandemic, I was back living in Paris for like a year in the house with my grandma, a house that I actually was able to buy for my grandma and being close to my mom and and my and the, my little nieces and nephew and everybody it's just it's cool to still be the same person but have these really awesome experiences that I never would have dreamed possible but when people ask me like what do you hope to give people or share it's like hopefully just inspiration to know that if you work hard for something bitch you can get it you yes. can get it it can come it can happen just don't give up and just kind of go out there with a good attitude about it and try your hardest. Yes. Uh, uh, Shangela, I have two more questions and I'm letting you go, but I do <laughs> want to talk about We're Here and I do want to know, what has this been like? You filmed this show and you are helping so many people and you're opening a lot of eyes in communities where, you know, it, it would never, their eyes would never be open. Like watching this reminds me, my family is from Humboldt, Tennessee, the middle of nowhere in the country. And that is exactly like what I grew up around, understand it 100. So be able to have you three individuals going into these places and just showing that the LGBT community is not the devil, it's not evil. These are great people who, and there are people who are having trouble and struggling. What has this show meant to you? This show, um, We're Here, is yet another great blessing to me that I get, that I say, wow, like, how cool. I didn't, I didn't audition for the show. Uh, the creators of the show, Johnny Ingram and Stephen Warren, uh, came to me and Bob and Eureka, invited us over to their house, and said, we had this idea for a show, and we want you three. That's it. 
we want you three, uh, and we want you to do it. And when they pitched the show's premise about traveling to small conservative towns and putting on a one night only drag show and connecting with people to share what their story and their experiences is like, you know, Bob and Eureka and I are all from small towns too, just like you. You know, Bob's from Columbus, Georgia originally, Eureka's Johnson City, Tennessee, and I'm from Paris, Texas. So we know what it's like growing up in a space where you don't see anyone around like you. You don't have a local gay bar in your town. There is no gay resource center, so you don't know who is an ally and who is not. You just don't have that kind of watering hole for the gays. And a lot of times in the communities that are a little more conservative, even big city uh, places, you get negative messages about being gay. So we're there, or I guess we should say we're here, <laughs> to reaffirm <laughs> who they are and see if we can come up with uh, a space for people to celebrate uh, everything that is great about our LGBTQ world and also drag. You know, a lot of people have a lot of stereotypes about drag that they don't know and they don't get to have that feeling of that it is something that can be empowering and it can be something that brings people together. They just would be like, no, I, no, no, no. And that's why our show really means a lot to me. It, it means a lot. And I cry so much. I had never been a crier, Joseph. I ain't never been a big crier. I just am not, I'm not that girl. I will cry on romantic comedies and I would cry, you know. <laughs> Certain music will get me together, but like I'm usually not a crier. And in this show, I get, I cry, I bawl because it just reminds us. You know, I live in LA mm -hmm. now, so I'm a little. And and also in 2021, we feel like okay, everything's better for the gays. Look at Pride. Every business got a rainbow child. They just spitting glitter, burping glitter, putting glitter, everything. <laughs> and <laughs> and honestly, though, that is not the experience for a lot of people still in our country. And it's important that we shine a light and we amplify these voices about, hey, look, everybody, it's just, it's not all perfect for all the gays everywhere. And, in, and until it is safe for our community in more places, we still have work to do. We can't exactly. just be out here like, okay, great, we got a commercial on Bravo with a, with a rainbow, lovely. No, mm-mm, because -mm. there are spaces across this great country of ours, but there are lots of spaces where um, there are so many stories. And ooh, ooh, I wish I could tell you more about season two. All I can tell you is it's going to be lovely. We're in the middle. We're like halfway through filming right now. Mm -hmm. And even up until this point where we've gotten, when I, when I tell you, if you think season one was a wowsy, season two, I mean, uh, and, and you know, it just highlights you know, so many great people of color, what, and the differences in our stories, you know? It, it differs in your gay experience, not only about where you're from, but also who you are, who the parts who make up who you are. What is your family like? What's your background? What's your religion? What's your race? All of those things give you a very unique story. And we've got some ooh. When I tell ooh. you some ooh, ooh. And it also reminds us that we are a lot more alike no matter where we live. You can mm -hmm. live in New York City, but still watch We're Here about somebody in Twin Falls, Idaho, and go, I have had the same experience, bitch. Exactly. Yeah. When, when can viewers expect for the new season? Is that potentially end of this year, early next year, sometime soon? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it's definitely it's coming, coming to HBO. And the first season is all on HBO Max. Yes. And I just know that when it drops, we're going to be out there pushing and pressing. Because, you know, we put out our last season in the middle of the pandemic, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were on all these billboards. I never saw not one of them in person. Uh, really? And, no, because, I mean, I was in Paris, Texas when the show premiered and stayed there yeah. the whole year. So we were all on the, like, a, and so many people didn't get to go out and see a lot of the mm -hmm. marketing. And so I, I'm so thankful that people did find a way to find the show and watch it and support it and, and get into it because it's good. And wow. I would, but I was so nervous that, like, maybe people aren't going to know about the show. Maybe they're not going to watch it. But then we were nominated for an Emmy uh, our first time out. So that was really cool. Um, and so, you know, I'm excited for more people now to hopefully be able to get into this show. Yes. And my last question for you, Shangela, is 
Since this show is called Exposed Dragged Out, I ask all the queens to tell me a story. It could be a behind the scenes story, happy, fun, sad, of something that happened during your experience of drag race that didn't get shown. So like I've had people tell me stories about uh, the lights on the makeup mirrors burning their outfits and stuff. So like, was there anything <laughs> that was not seen that like sticks out to you? Oh, well God, there's always tons that is not seen. Um, uh, huh. Something that was not seen on the show that sticks out to me. Well, one thing for sure, I don't think people got to see, this is funny. Uh, so Kennedy, right? Kennedy is hilarious. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Davenport. And she would bring her own seasoning salt to everything we did. They would be like, all right, guys, we're breaking for lunch. And she'd be like, uh, baby, go. Uh, no, she wouldn't say baby. She'd say, Shangela, go over there and hand me my seasoned salt. This food is bland. <laughs> and so we were like, oh, my God, she's putting seasoned salt on everything. And then once we got a taste of her seasoning salt, we learned, bitch, that salt is good. So all of us started asking for Kennedy's seasoning salt. <laughs> Everywhere we went, she would have that seasoning salt. She would come out with that salt. I don't know where that salt came from, her titty, wherever it <laughs> came from. She would have that salt, bitch. She had that seasoning salt everywhere. That was pretty hilarious. Um, oh. And emotional things that happened that people didn't get to see. Yeah, I think, oh, oh. I don't know if I can tell this or not. I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm Shangela. You are Shangela, and, say what? And and it will not prohibit me from being brought back in a box again, I don't think. But at this point, <laughs> I own so many boxes, I can bring my own box. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> no, it is, you know, we were naughty a little bit. In season three of Drag Race, okay? We were the early girls, oh, okay? Early days, and yeah. The early days. And this is before, you know, they got really strict with when we were off, like monitoring, like having a hall monitor there in the hallway at the rooms in the hotel. So I, we figured out that if you put duct tape on the lock of your door, that when it closes, it doesn't lock you out. Cause we didn't have keys to our rooms. So we would put duct tape, you know, drag queens always gonna have some duct tape, mm -hmm. baby. We would duct tape the door so that after the show, after the episode, at the end of the day, we could sneak over to someone else's room and kiki. Okay, so we would just be like, all right, bitch, we're going to all meet in Mariah's room tonight at 930. Okay, get the duct tape. So we would put the duct tape on the doors and sneak out. And one time, Stacy had just been voted off. Okay, but she hadn't gone home yet. It's Stacy Lane Matthews, my sister. And it was her birthday. And she had never been, you know, this was Stacy's first time on a plane to coming to Drag Race. She was from Back Swamp. Uh, North Carolina and so we were like oh this girl has never been to LA before and she's not gonna get to see any of LA because we're filming and we're here well leave it to Miss Shanji always got an idea baby I said y'all we should take Stacy to the club and the girls were like no Shangela we will get in so much trouble you know and I was like y'all she already kicked off they're not gonna just send us home at this point. We're in the middle of filming. We're not gonna get caught, y'all. I got a plan. Leave it to Shanji that y'all always try to come up with a plan, girl. I had a plan. So we put the duct tape on the doors, and that night around 10 o'clock, we snuck, it was me. Oh, I'm telling them, everybody, they're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me. They're okay. Um, so it was me, Alexis, Yara, I believe, Mariah, she had a bottle of wine. She passed out. She didn't. She we met in her room, but she went to sleep. She didn't even go with us. And Stacy, it was four of us, I believe so. And we we went downstairs, snuck out, called a taxi. Cause, okay, this is back. Before, we don't have cell phones. Oh, they take no all of Ubers, our phones. Yeah. No Ubers. Maybe this is before the days of Uber. Okay. Mm. And we did, we also didn't have phones, so we called a taxi from a payphone. Can you imagine that? A payphone, gross. So anyway, we called a taxi. We took the taxi up to West Hollywood. We, and we couldn't, go, like, now thinking about it, we'd be so in trouble because people know us. But at that time, they didn't know who we were because the show hadn't aired. I'd just been on one episode of season two. Girl, they wouldn't bother with me, Shanji. And I lived in L.A., so it wasn't not unlikely that I'd be at a club in L.A. 
So we took her out for her first time going to a big club. We went to arena. We went. We, I, we're like, this is L.A. girl. This is the gay scene in L.A. Live your life. Let's have a cocktail. Yes. And we like. And I'll never forget. Uh, Alexis ran into some boy that she had dated or whatever, and she's like, "It's fate, Shangela." It's fate. I would have never thought I was going to see him ever again. And the one night we sneak out, there he was. It's fate. I'm like, oh, bitch, it is not no fate, girl. We should come on. <laughs> no fate so, at all. Yeah, she said it was fate. So, um, and but the worst thing is at the end, I'll, I'll say this and I'll be done. At the end of the night, okay, we're like, okay, y'all, we got to hurry. We got to get out of here, get a taxi back down to where we're filming. It's like, you know, an hour, uh, 45 minutes away. We're filming down south somewhere. And... There were no taxis available. None. We could not find a car to save our lives. And we were like, oh my God, we're stuck at the club. We don't have a ride. We're going to get in so much trouble. So we had to walk, if you're familiar with LA in any way, we had to walk from Arena, which is somewhere between La Brea and Highland mm -hmm. uh, over there on Santa Monica. We had to walk all the way up to where we thought we knew we could get a cab, which was at Hollywood and Highland. So it's about a good, like, two to three miles, okay? We had to walk at 2 o'clock in the morning. And Stacy, God bless her, she, it was her birthday. <laughs> Poor Stacy. And, you know, Stacy, my sister, but she was like, bitch, it's too hot for my fat ass to be walking out here. She just kept saying that, bitch, y'all really got me walking six miles at 2 o'clock in the morning, bitch. This ain't no birthday, bitch. This ain't no birthday. But we had a great time, and we finally caught a taxi, got back to the hotel, and went to our rooms, and no one ever knew. No one ever knew. We never got in trouble. You made Stacey Lane Matthews whole experience. You know she got back and was so excited. Like, you, Shangela, you just know how to do it. It was, it was me and the girls. We all kind of came together, and we're like, bitch, we're going to do this. We were like Kim undercover. We were just oh. like Kim Possible. That's what it was. Kim, we were very Kim, Kim Possible. Possible. So good. Well, thank you so much, Shangela, for being here and uh, exposing yourself for this <laughs> podcast. Um, so make sure to subscribe to our show and you can rate and review it on your favorite podcast app. Also, Shangela, where can people find you on the socials? Oh, honey, uh, in addition to your local grocery store, yes. you can find me online. Uh, I'm at It's Shangela, I-T-S Shangela. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, all of that. I'm all over there, girl. And TikTok now. I'm at It's Shangela Ooh. on TikTok. I'm the TikTok doll, too. And, uh, of course, on my website, Shangela.com. And also make sure you check out Feed the Queens. Uh, Feed the Queens on Instagram and FeedTheQueens.com. It's a charity organization that I kicked off last year. We raised $100,000 during the pandemic to support all of the drag entertainers that were out of work with uh, grocery donations. So we gave out like $250, $400 gift cards each for groceries um, to out of work drag entertainers. And we're still continuing that uh, organization because there's always a number of drag entertainers that need support. And yes. that's what Feed the Queens is all about. So thank you so much for just checking that out. And thanks for keeping in touch with me, girl. Oh, absolutely love this. Thank you so much, Angela. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I thank you so much. Ooh. That's my Mariah. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Santa. Oh, Santa. Yes, I live, I live. <laughs>